Oh, my name is Jim Casting. Okay, and Jim, are we alone in the universe? We are not alone. Uh, I'm a fan of Carl Sagan, and I think Carl was right about this. You do? So, okay, so uh, is that based on hope or rationality, or both? It's a combination, but it's mostly hope right now. <laughs> okay. Well, I've heard that you're a, a Trekkie, so you like Star Trek, so does that play any role in your uh, hope? Star Trek's a very uh, optimistic film, too, so or TV series, okay. so, so yes. Anyway, so you, I asked you a question, are we alone? And you said, yes, I kind of hope it. Is that right? I kind of hope it. Yes. All right, so what's this hope based on? Well, there is scientific justification for it. And what is your scientific, how do you understand that? What I work on is habitable planets uh, like the Earth and the question of whether there are other habitable planets out there. And I think you can make a pretty credible argument that there should be other habitable planets. And by habitable planets, you mean Earth-like with water in the surface or something? Earth-like, we've talked about that at this workshop we're at in Paris. And uh, you need a planet with a solid or liquid surface to begin with, no gas giants like Jupiter or Saturn. You need carbon because I think all life will be carbon-based. Mm -hmm. And if you're talking about finding life on planets around other stars, you need surface liquid water because I don't th you, you need for life to be present at a planet's surface so it can modify the atmosphere in a way we can measure remotely. And I think if it doesn't have, if the planet doesn't have liquid water, we won't recognize the evidence for life. But independent of our ability to recognize it, let's just talk about whether it's there or not. Well, life can be there. I'm interested in testable questions. Mm -hmm. So if there's life on Proxima Centauri B, but we can't test it, then that's, that's sort of like how many angels can fit on the head of a pin. Uh, so that, you know, science is all about testable hypotheses. In the question, are we alone? You answered, yes, I kind of hope. What did you understand by the word we? We, to me means, is there life out there? I mean, there's, there's at least two fundamental questions. One is, is there life off the earth? And the, the other, which I think more people are interested in, is, is there intelligent life off the earth? I'm, I, I'm optimistic about both, but I'm most optimistic about simple life because, because I think, back to the great filter, I think the great filter is ahead of us, not behind us. So I, I agree with Carl Sagan that, you know, life, habitable planets should be widespread. The origin of life, I think Carl would have argued, was relative, not that uncommon of, of an event. And so getting up to simple life, I think, will happen frequently. Well, if you think the, fil the bottleneck is ahead of us, then Nick Bostrom has written an article about this saying, if we find independently evolved life on Mars, that would be the worst worst headline ever. That would be the worst news we have ever received. Why? Because that means the bottleneck is ahead of That's us. That's right. And uh, so, so you are very, very pessim. Do you share that pessimism? Do you think it would be terrible if we found life independently evolved life on Mars? Actually, you know, I read one of Bostrom's articles. I think it was entitled "The Great Filter." Uh -huh. uh, so he's he's one of the champions of that concept. Yeah. Yes, and I know. It changed my whole. Viewpoint. I thought I was an optimist because I, I <laughs> and then you realized. liked Carl Sagan. And then I realized after reading that article that I'm actually a pessimist. I see. <laughs> okay. Um, in, so are we alone? We talk about we. So we could be two things. One is all life. But, you know, we don't really know what life is. So what do you mean by life? Like viruses? Are viruses alive in your world? It doesn't matter in my world. Uh, viruses are... I think there's a continuum between life and non-life, and viruses are somewhere on that continuum. So They're, then the question, are we alone, is kind of, kind of very ambiguous. Well, but... Uh, very well defined. But there's, there's things that are definitely not alive, like rocks, mm -hmm. and uh, things that are definitely alive, like people and microbes, and, and, and viruses are in between. Uh, I think that life does self-organize. We, we're at this Origin of Life workshop here in Paris, and, and there's disputes about how that whole origins problem works. I mean, there is no agreement on that. All right, how about the question alone? 
Are we alone? There's another word, alone. Now, if I walk out of this room, will you be in here alone? I think it goes back to the question of testability or detectability. So, so what I'm interested in, the life question, in, in if, if there's nobody there in the room, then in some sense, you know, it's, you're not detectable. Uh, I'm not sure that's a good analogy, but that, I'm not interested in, in life out there on other planets that we can't possibly detect. I'm interested in... Right, but I was more interested in, some people think that if we detect life on Mars, microbes, that we will still be alone because it's not intelligent life with, with whom we can talk. Oh. And some people think, oh, I'd still be alone. But is, that, is your view like that as well? It's, it's, two, it's two separate bo questions, both interesting. And see, I, I guess I'm more interested in the life question because during my lifetime, especially, but during, probably during both of our lifetimes, it's much easier to test that hypothesis than the the intelligent life hypothesis. A lot of biologists talk about how life, a lot of them feel that life is getting more complex. And I think some geologists like Rob Hazen think that the geology is getting more complex, more and more minerals with time. Now you do atmosphere studies. Do you think atmospheres get more complex with time? They get complex in one big step, which was talked about here. When you get the rise of oxygen, which is a bio, you know, forced by biology, then atmospheric chemistry becomes more complex because you have sources of reduced gases at the, at the Earth's surface, some of which are natural from volcanoes, some of which are biological, and then you get all these reduced gases getting oxidized in the atmosphere, and that does give you more complex chemistry. Um, but if I showed you a, a atmospheric composition of a bunch of planets. Could you put them in any order of time? Like here's the early one, here's the next one, and here's a here's an older one. Oh yes, I mean that's what I work on. Okay, so, so uh, then then there are then atmospheres do evolve. Would you use that uh, word? I, that's uh, you know that's my main home field is atmospheric evolution, and atmospheres do evolve. If you, I'm asking for a directionality to that. Like biologists say, to be more complex, you have not said atmospheres get more complex. One of the great, one of the steps uh, that's listed as a potential difficult step for the great filter argument is the rise of oxygen, mm -hmm. because that, as you well know, it requires the evolution of oxygenic photosynthesis by cyanobacteria in Earth's case. And that, that doesn't sound like an atmospheric thing, it sounds like a biological it thing. It is biological and, you know. So what's the probability of cyanobacteria or oxygenic photosynthesis arising elsewhere in other Well, we, we don't know, you can't calculate that because what we do think we know is it only happened once on Earth. Uh, it was, in, oxygenic photosynthesis was invented by the cyanobacteria and then spread to eukaryotes, yes, yes. including higher plants, by endosymbiosis. So it's hard to predict the probability of something that's only happened once. That's right. Uh, and then, so there, you, it becomes philosophical. And I, I think that uh, if you have planets that have st relatively stable climates for several billion years, as we have on Earth, then I think photosynthesis will, will get invented, oxygenic photosynthesis will get invented. 